Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Heat Wave 32 teams in 32 days. And we are breaking down every single fantasy relevant player coming into the 2022 season. Today, we are focusing on the Chiefs. I am your host, the fantasy plug, Tim Petropolis, editor in chief of BrotoFantasy.com and the Fantasy Football by Broto app. I am joined by my brother, Michael, the king of this fantasy thing and lead fantasy analyst for Broto. Matt Ward, the dynasty Don and the fantasy encyclopedia himself, also the lead writer at BrotoFantasy.com and Santiago Casanova, the genius of fantasy. Broto lead data analyst and the developer of the Fantasy Football by Broto app. Speaking of the Fantasy Football by Broto app, it's absolutely free and it is available right now. And if you don't have it already, then you should know. Then I'll, I'll let you know that is the only tool you need to dominate fantasy and become your own expert. It literally has every single stat for every single player. We've been doing this for six years and we put every stat that you could possibly need in a app. That's what we did. Fantasy player cards, fantasy player grades, usage charts, start sit tools, player comps, podcasts, consistency charts, game logs, coaching tendencies articles, rankings, waivers, a who to, to draft tool for your drafts, and advanced stats, including true throw value, true target value, true performance value, adjusted air yards, and true matchup rankings, which are exclusive to Broto Fantasy. The app is free because of our patrons over at patreon.com slash Broto Fantasy. A big thank you to the patrons. Uh, you are the reason why the Broto machine can keep on pumping. Join now to support the show the app and join the best community in the freaking world for as little as three months. I'm sorry, for as little as $3 per month, you get it come for more than three months. You know, just that's just a little tip. You got to come for more than three months. Come on, come on, come join us. We're going to win championships. It's going to take at least six months. Um, well, Where was I? Where was I? For it, for $3, you get an extra waiver wire show access to Broto leagues, proven DFS cash game optimizers, access to cheat codes, private team consultations, the most unique fantasy leagues at, with the people in the community and access to the greatest community in the world, the Broto Discord. If you enjoy the show, if you enjoy the app, please consider joining. Your contributions go a long way. Uh, our boy Izzy, uh, who won the who won one of the Broto leagues last year and who's in the Discord yep. and who um, is an a, who, extremely uh, valuable member of the Discord. Um, and Nick, and, or maybe it was Nick, not Izzy. One, one of those guys, they said. Izzy won. I look, I look, yeah, no, yeah. Nick said, I look forward to the Discord during fantasy season more than I even uh, look forward to playing fantasy. So that's, that's what you're, uh, that's what you're getting. All right. Um, but let's get into the fantasy while we're here. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs are up on the docket. Usually the Kansas City Chiefs are a pretty uh, standard team. Tyree Kill, Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid's going to make them all happen. And then, you know, you might have a low range RB2. That's what they've been, but this year they've completely turned it on their head. But and Andy Reid is back, ninth year for Andy Reid uh, as the head coach of the Chiefs. It's the fourth year for perennial head coach maid of honor, Eric Bieniemy. Uh, they'll be running a version of the offense that they've always been running uh, with one major exception, no Cheetah, no Tyreek Hill. That's the big story if you're a Kansas City Chiefs fan and if you're, if you're looking at the Kansas City Chiefs offense. Last year with Tyreek Hill, they were fourth in scoring offense. They passed 61% of the time, which was fifth for any coach not fired midseason and seventh overall. Uh, they tried to replace him uh, with some wide receivers. Their additions this year, wide receiver Juju Smith, wide, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, excuse me, wide receiver Sammy Watkins, wide receiver M, you know, I should just say his full name, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, running back Ronald Jones, and they drafted rookie Sky Moore in the second round. They basically turned over their entire wide receiver uh, situation because not only did they lose Tyree Kill, but they also let Demarcus Robinson walk. They let Byron Pringle walk, and uh, a storyline that you should keep in you should keep in your mind. Uh, their left tackle Orlando Brown was franchised, and apparently he wants to get paid like one of the top people in the league. And Is apparently they yeah apparently they don't want to do that yet. So uh, there's a there's a battle going on between Orlando and this team. So this might be one of those Trent Brown like holdout holdouts. So uh, yeah, something to keep in mind. But let's go to the place that we know what we're getting. At least we think we know what we're getting in Patrick Mahomes. We've never seen Patrick Mahomes without Tyree Kill. I think it would be foolish to say Patrick Mahomes is a product of Tyree. Dark... But you don't know how much of pra Patrick Mahomes' greatness is kind of like the the alchemist of it is Tyreek Hill in a sense. So 
like what what's the deal? What do we think about Pat Mahomes this year? Tim, before I get into Patrick Mahomes, I want to say that I'm a little disappointed in you for um not realizing that instead of saying absolutely free, you could say absolutely free. That is a little uh it's an app. True. You, you're better than that. Wow. <laughs> I mean, uh I don't know what to say. Uh, I, yeah. I I agree. You're just just switch it up from now on. But anywho, yes, Patrick Mahomes, the young goat. Look, he's been an A plus fantasy performer. Every single season since he has become a starting quarterback in his sophomore season, this past season in his down year that people were kind of upset about from a fantasy standpoint, he had a 98.7 true fantasy grade and was second in points per game. He had 10 QB1 performances, including several top two overall performances on the year. The man just balls out. That's what he does. And I understand that Tyree Kill is gone and the Chiefs didn't really try to replace him with a different star. They did the grab a few different pieces and try to recreate or try to, you know, change up the offense a little bit. And uh, that's what they did with Juju Smith Schuster, who I've always been a big fan of uh, Marcus Valdez Scantling to bring the speed. And then Sky Moore as the exciting young rookie who could maybe make an instant impact as well. None of these guys are Tyreek Hill. Obviously it's, it's a big loss, but they're going to have an impact for Mahomes and Patrick Mahomes just ended the season 15th in yards per attempt, 30th in average depth of target, and 22nd in deep ball completion percentage. Career lows basically across the board, and he still ended second in points per game. And yeah. people want to start fading Patrick Mahomes now because Tyreek Hill is injured. That's not going to be me. Look, I'm not someone who drafts quarterbacks super early if they are going too early for my liking. Um, but I feel like there's been more of a change in the like drafting quarterback culture where you don't have to reach for quarterbacks anymore. Now they're settling into like the fourth, fifth, sixth round where they actually are a pretty decent value. So if you get Patrick Mahomes in like the fifth or sixth round, which I've got a few times um, in, in best ball and uh, underdog tournaments, for example, I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, I'm perfectly fine drafting Patrick Mahomes at that cost. And I don't, I don't think it's smart for people to be fading Patrick Mahomes this season just because Tyreek Hill is gone. So let's talk about the wide receivers then. He's going to be talking to, he's going to be throwing it guys. And right now it's a completely, it's a complete mystery who's going to be because you got Juju, right? And Juju, he, there's a case to be made for him, but also he hasn't played outside of the slot in maybe his entire career. He's been a slot guy the entire career, right? So does he change roles now? How does that work out? MVS, you say, hey, maybe he's coming to a good situation, but then you look at his last situation, he was playing with Aaron Rodgers. Yep. Right. So it's not like it's not like he's getting a huge quarterback upgrade. Right. And then you got Sammy Watkins, who shout out to Jason. Uh, Jason, not with us today, uh, doing his doing his thing. But hate Sammy Watkins mentions all the time that Sammy Watkins actively makes teams worse. Yo, and Sammy has Watkins been plays for the that. Packers, by the way. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah he, I'm, left. I'm, he, he switched with MVS. Pretty he, much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Either way. You're he talking sucks. about a you're talking yeah you're talking about a wide receiver room that has it's completely brand new. So which one of these guys and then, and <laughs> I just completely just completely take away Sammy Watkins, which is probably addition by subtraction. Um, which one of these guys is the guy who makes it? I mean, for me, it's clearly Juju, wide receiver mm -hmm. one, and it's not even a question. Slot or not, he is the most capable wide receiver out of that that group. So if we look at last year's stats in that wide receiver, you may have Hardman, MVS, and then Sky Moore, who doesn't really have last year's stats, but they had a 12.3 target share and a 14.1 target share. And they finished uh, 64th and 79th in points per game last season. Those guys are not stepping up into a wide receiver one role anytime soon. Now you have Juju Smith-Schuster with a career. I'm not taking last year's stats because they were a little bit, hindered by his injury and uh, a yeah. dying Big Ben. So <laughs> <laughs> his career target percentage is 21.2, I'm pretty sure, even Nailed counting last, last season, just not yep. exclusively last season. If you see guys that had a similar uh, target percentage last season, they were wide receiver once. And not all not, they were not catching passes from Patrick Mahomes. So if Juju maintains that 20 ish target percentage with passes from uh, Patrick Mahomes, which are more valuable than Ben Roethlisberger, for example, 
Yeah. You're looking at a wide receiver one probably, and his ADP does not reflect that. He is being drafted at wide receiver 34 in sleeper. That is ridiculous, honestly. Honestly ridiculous. He has wide receiver one potential. Maybe not draft him uh, top te- top 12, but at least top 20, man. What What is wide receiver 34? He's definitely going to be a wide receiver too. Go ahead. I do just want to add that Juju Smith-Schuster is one of my uh, highest rostered best ball players. At the Absolutely. Moment. I have no one doubt. I just thought when I saw the ADP, well. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. He he is a steal right now. And for the other guys, you have uh, Hardman and MBS, which like we've seen them both play with very good, both quarter, uh, very good quarterbacks, both of them. And they have not been good. So I'd rather take a, a stab at Sky Moore at wide receiver 47. Because if you look at his broader comps, you got Brandon Cooks. Rashad Bateman, Tyler Boyd, T.Y. Hilton. Those are very decent comps to have. So I do like Sky Moore as a number two, getting him late in drafts. Like I said, his ADP is on like wide receiver 47. That's super dope to get uh, late in drafts. I'm, that's that's why I'm leaning as a wide receiver two in Kansas City. There you go. <laughs> Kansas City, baby. Uh, can, uh, I learned that Kansas City wasn't in Kansas when I was way too, I should have known that already. I'm, I'm not going to, I don't remember exactly these, but I, I remember, I should have known. Uh, but what, another thing you should know is that this app that we have here, the Fantasy Football by Brodo app, has everything you need to dominate fantasy football and become an expert. And one of the things that you need when you're an expert is you need coaching tendencies, right? You need the coaching tendencies. And we have those coaching tendencies for you here on the Fantasy Football by Broto app. So, with that being said, Cass, I'm going to kick it to you and show them how to use the coaching tendencies on the app. Yeah, they're a very useful feature. Uh, I think way back when and when the feature started, it was you that requested them. So, this is this one's for you, Tim. Dedicated to you. Tim's the old man, so he's the one who requests old people things like, I want to see pass percentage. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. But yeah, if you look no, at, at the app, you can check uh, by season or sure. by coach. So right now I'm looking at general tendencies by season in uh, the 21 season. So you can see that Cliff Kingsbury ran 591 pe- uh, times. So that was good for uh, 45.6 run percentage. You can sort by run percentage, pass percentage. So the highest pass percentage went to Bruce Arians. The highest run percentage went to Nick Sirianni. And you can do... Uh, home and away splits, uh, Vegas spreads, uh, split by down. So if you want to see who passed the most on first down, it was Sean McDermott. That's probably the key to their success. I'm just speculating here. Fourth down pass percentage, uh, David Cully. And anything you want, you can find in this, uh, uh, this page for coaching trends. Check it out in the app. Bang, bang. Oh, I love that page. It's like you're you're like uh and you got the voice too. You're like a you're like a, a sexy spokesperson now. Okay. Hey, I so take it. Say the hair Hire me. Flowing, Hire you know, me. David just, Cully was incredibly aggressive with play calling last year. So I'm yeah, glad that, like <laughs> like even just thinking about that, that we genuinely have the data that backs that up. Yeah, cool little nugget there. Yeah. All right, so let's get into these running backs here. The running back in this is is, is interesting because CEH, um, obviously, especially when you're considering the guys that he was drafted uh, above uh, definitely has been suck. He's been suck. So with that being said, they brought in Ronald Jones, who also has been partly suck, right? But he's had his moments. Ronald Jones has been suck, man. Don't say random ass. No, he had random ass good moments, bro. Yeah, man. He's he's been less suck than CEH, right? This is real scientific Uh, breakdown right now. I disagree. What? Yeah, I kind of disagree, too. (laughs) Okay, so Matt Ward, break it down. Uh, What what do you think is – you think that that CEH has sucked less than Ronald Jones? I mean, more than Ronald Jones? Less, I mean? Well, yeah, I mean – I mean, we have a larger sample size of failure with Ronald Jones and than we do with CEH. I mean, year one breakouts are like what you want to see from running backs. Running backs don't usually take the same age gap to break out and produce at an NFL level. They usually hit the ground running and we see rookie running backs get, you know, 280, 300 touches all the time. And CEH didn't get that in his first year. Uh, he only had 181 rushing attempts and then way down in his second year. I mean, he's missed. I get uh, 10 games, I think, in, in his NFL career, which obviously isn't a great sign either for an undersized back. Um, 
But yeah, he's had very minimal attempt to really find success in that offense. And being in a Kansas City offense with Patrick Mahomes and not being able to find success even in small sample sizes is kind of concerning. But I mean, particularly Rojo's because had... look what look what Daryl Williams did when his in his opportunities last year. I just right. like, I'm sorry to cut you off, but like that's why I'm saying less suck because you know Daryl Williams killed it in his opportunities last year, and then Ceh came back and and continued to to suck. But anyway, go ahead. I mean, we've, uh, and I was, I was kind of going to get to that is what we want cl- to see from Edwards Hilaire is receptions. We, we know he's not a super efficient rusher. He wasn't at LSU with Burrow. Uh, you want to see him be that mobile satellite back in open space that can break off big chunk games after catching the pass. And he only had 1.9 perceptions per game last year, um, 12.9 receiving yards per game. So even in his 10 games played, like it's not like he was popping off and giving you a legit PPR cheat code, which is obviously what he was drafted for in the first round for Kansas City in the first place. Um, and on the other hand, you have Ronald Jones. Yeah, and, and it's it's pretty obvious the roles that they're going to take. I don't think it should be confusing for anybody, even though it's a new offense. We we know that it's going to be uh, Rojo as the thumper inside the five, first down, and Clyde Edward on second, third down, catching passes, hopefully, or, or at least you know uh, playing in that role because he's a good enough route runner to do so. Um, they just don't utilize him. I so, think here's for- here's a question for you. What about Jet McKinnon? Because they yeah, they I, I mean they signed Jarek McKinnon and, and that's the that's kind of the role that he slots out to play. Yeah, uh, McKinnon should certainly have some like low end PPR upside really late in your drafts. But I really think like cost considering, even though McKinnon is the cheapest of the three, that Rojo is probably the back that you want. Um, even in ten games last year, uh, Ceh had six touchdowns. Yeah, six total touchdowns in just 10 games. So they do let their running back score. And if we're thinking about who they're going to use inside of the red zone and who's going to see the most scoring opportunities, I think that's probably Ronald Jones on this offense. So considering ADP and considering cost of all three, um, he's kind of the, the, I think, the least volatile option and probably the option that's going to see the most valuable touches. I, I, Michael... I mean, I agree with you. I, I agree with you for different reasons. I think that that Ronald Jones can actually be the guy, and like just because I think they're just uh, they're looking. They wouldn't have signed Ronald Jones if they believed in Ceh. I think they 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 want they don't they don't trust him. They he was a receiving back. They haven't used him that way, and I don't I don't think that it's look. Andy Reid utilizes his personnel maybe better than anyone in the league. He is always constantly changing, constantly evolving. He'll he'll go from, you know, the number one rush offense in the league one year to the one number one pass offense in the league the next year. Like he's always just been like that. And CEH hasn't been able to success in those situations. So I don't think it's a it's a coincidence. Yeah. Uh I mean I go ahead. I don't think it's like lights out for CEH. Yeah. Like I just before and you know before we wrap up the running backs is like Casanova has covered this in, in one of his many uh, data analysts, but basically like where targets come from and who gets targets to the running backs. Like, is it a causality of the running back themselves or the quarterback? And it's mostly like the quarterback is the, the highest causality for how running backs are in targets. And Patrick Mahomes doesn't chuck down to running backs. And, and, even in the Kareem Hunt years, the Brian Westbrook years, like that was Alex Smith. That was Donovan McNabb. That was, you know, so Andy Reid, kind of everybody hoping for that Brian Westbrook breakout from Clyde Edwards Hilaire because Andy Reid has done it before with smaller pass catching backs. I think that that's kind of behind us. And that's more a product of Mahomes than it is Andy Reid. But I, I do think that Clyde Edwards is the biggest risk at cost out of all three and that yeah, I don't know if he can take over the backfield, but I, I do think that people are going to get a pretty good value on Ronald Jones at like running back 34 or whatever he is right now. Yeah, totally agree here Um, on Ronald Jones. Michael, tight ends. Travis Kelsey. He's been the number one tight guy. End. Travis Kelsey had five straight seasons as the tight end one overall to only to be dethroned from the top of the podium last season by Mark Andrews. The uh, the newest, the newest, maybe uh, Travis Kelsey, maybe his reign begins this season. That's not what ADP says, though. ADP has Travis Kelsey once again atop the list of uh, of tight ends, um, and it makes logical sense. You know, he's been the tight end one. He was the tight end one overall five straight seasons. Was a tight end two overall last season. Um, and with Tyreek Hill out the door, it seems that his target share looks completely protected, if not increased. However, this may sound crazy. I just 
I don't like Travis Kelsey at ADP at all this season. Um, I'm not one to think Travis uh, Tyree Kill's targets are going to go to Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey already has a lion's share of the targets. I don't think he's going to get more targets. I think his role is his role already. And it's more likely the other targets from Tyree Kill get spread out among the other guys. Um, Kelsey is 32 years old. He's going to turn 33 in October. And people forget he looked old in 2021 several times. People just don't want to remember that part of 2021, but he did. He had five games from 2017 to 2019 where he was a tight end 20 or worse. That means he literally had five bad games in a three-year span. And then last season, he did that four times alone. Four times you had Travis Kelsey on your roster and we're like, damn, Travis Kelsey put up a dud for me, which you would never used to do. He had a, the lowest yards per reception um, and lowest yards per target of his career. The lowest average depth of target since 2016. I'm just not sure he's this automatic grand slam home run at his first round price tag. Like, I absolutely think he'll still be a top three lowest, maybe top five tight end option just because of his role. And I still think he has enough juice in him to produce at that level. But there's no way I'm drafting him in, in the first round as my first player um, after the uh, the the downturn he took last year that nobody wants to remember. There's a... Uh... If, if you're wondering, like Michael said, there is a, the difference is is the cheetah. Uh, he mentioned that in the beginning. If you're wondering, in four games, Travis Kelsey has played without Tyree Kill in his career. Uh, first of all, he's played 90 games with, and he's had 76, <laughs> 76 yards per game. But in the four games, 25 receptions for 351 yards. That's 88 yards per game and one touchdown. So his, his production does go up a little bit in his career without Tyree Kill. But that's, you know. That's there's old there's only, Travis Kelsey. Not, there's only not so much. Yeah, Kelsey. there's only so much you can put into that. Into and that I mean, uh, that I just said with, with it, it, I mean, you kind of like buried the the validity of that stat just in saying it is like it's four games out of ninety four right. played. Exactly. Like, it's it's, so it's just way too small of a sample size. There's correct. There's, and, and and when you start looking at things like that, just for the listeners, if you do start trying to do split stats and extrapolations, it can be a pretty slippery slope. You, yeah, you don't. have to start looking at defensive hits. <laughs> yes, and if you really are, you have to start looking who they played against defensive matchup like points per game allowed for that and like you know if kelsey was playing um, because those four games weren't consecutive and they were in different seasons like kelsey could have played the lions twice yeah so yeah. as uh the local stats guy i i, I just want to make clear to the listeners as a rule of thumb splits are bad Ignore splits. When a fantasy analyst is just talking with splits and oh when they played at home and wrote Ignore that. It, it's mostly noise. They're bad. That's uh, that was my PSA. Thank you. <laughs> That's interesting. I'm sure there's many numbers to back up that statement. Um, but with that being said, a statement now that we don't necessarily need so many numbers to back up. Our bold prediction, uh, our hot take, if you if you may. Um, what we think if everything goes according to plan um, is your bold prediction. Matt looked like he had a big smile on his face when I mentioned this. So Matt, you can go first. Oh. Oh, I just want to be the first to say it because I swear we're all going to have the same one. I, I think Juju is going to finish in the top, you know, 12 of the wide receivers. Yep. I think Juju's wide receiver one. Like, I, I think he's a smash at ADP. He's an excellent dynasty value still somehow, even after all the hype of the offseason has boiled back down and the market's kind of settled out. Juju is still a phenomenal value. So, yeah, go draft Juju. He will pay off. I want to go. I want to go next because I have a spicy take to piggyback off matt juju outscores travis kelsey whoa, whoa. No, that's like crazy it. that's I crazy like now, i love that's it but that's bold. crazy <laughs> but was it two years ago that kelsey led the the league in uh, either targets or yards it was, it was one of those i believe yeah, it was i mean it would have been the ago. same year i think yeah 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 but i just wouldn't <laughs> yeah, remember yeah. which category it was it was yards, yards um yeah, yeah. two cast uh, this is also a Juju related. I, I just phrase it a little it. bit differently. I mean, it, it's it's a slam, slam dunk. But uh, the way I phrase it is Juju is going to outperform his ADP by over 20 spots. So that's how much of a value I think he is right now. Hot damn. All right, guys. Um, sorry in advance. Uh, this guy. <laughs> look, I wrote an article about Juju. And <laughs> how... Roto is a Juju loving family. Well, no. It wasn't a very positive one. Juju oh. just he does he's he's 
I don't know. I think he might have been a product of of the system a bit, a, a little bit. I'm going to say MVS is the highest scoring wide receiver on the Chiefs. That's my Stop, dude. Uh, yo, pure, bro. pure trash take. Pure a trash horrible, take. Horrible, man. On that note, uh, Michael, where could they, uh, you know what? I'll just tell you. At Brodo FF, Mike. At Brodo F Casanova. At Brodo F Tim. At Cycle FF. And don't forget to follow at Brodo at Brodo FF Jason, and at FF by Brodo uh, on Twitter. Until next time.